Welcome to the Friday Update. My name is Damien DeNoble. This is Law Great, the place where I give you reliable information to get, make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. Today I'm talking about an update from the H2B Forum hosted by the Seasonal Employer Association this past Wednesday with representatives from the Department of Homeland Security and USCIS, Department of Labor, the Department of State. There were a lot of big things that happened at this forum. It's the first time that it's been held since 2019. So it offered uh, stakeholders in the H2B process and some stakeholders in the H2A process to ask various agency representatives what they're doing to make the program better moving forward and a lot of things came out of that program that are the a lot of things came out of that forum rather that are really really positive so I just want to touch on a few of those and I'll start with the Department of Labor go to the Department of State and go to USCIS but I'll give you kind of my top three uh, positive uh, changes that are happening first okay so the first thing to know I just this is kind of number one for me personally because I I've, I've hated this part of the process USCIS says we are not going to have to file I-129 forms and duplicates going forward so that again we don't have to file the I-129 form and duplicate going forward I'll believe it when I see it so I might still file a duplicate for this coming uh, additional worker season but if that's true that's huge USCIS has also said they are working or talking about working on an electronic I-129 form submission system. They are not committing to a timeline because it's a complex form and hey, we've already spent over three billion dollars trying to digitize the USCIS and the Ellis system. So why go any faster than need be? But I digress. Okay, my number two big development, the Department of Labor uh, you know, they told us, hey, all of our folks have been working from home, which has added to some of the delays. But we understand that prevailing wage delays, delays on notices of action when the 9142 filed are a big deal. So they are staffing up. We're not going to see that affect this 2023 filing season for the April 1st start date, but we will see it in future seasons. So just get ready for another set of, you know, longer wait times for notices of action and understand that it's because, and I didn't know this before the forum, 100%, nearly 100% of the Department of Labor workforce that works on those prevailing wages and 9142 decisions is working from home. So in your head, when you're not getting a response, you know, after you've respond, responded to a notice of deficiency and you'll get a response in 10 days, no, that's a person from home. And it's good to pester them a little more. I had a lot of luck past two, three seasons really pestering via the helpline and via emails and uh, to, to get something looked at when it's when it's um, caught a hitch. And now I know what I suspected, which is that those workers are all working from home okay so that makes things complicated okay so that's number two and then number three the department of state said that they are staffing up for this season at the consulate specifically mission mexico knows that there is increased demand in this program and in the h2a program and they are adding 50 percent additional staff at least so it should make consulates um you know uh, smoother sailing in some parts of the world okay but now let's get into the nitty-gritty what's really interesting about the uh department of labor is that everybody's been reporting this notices of deficiency issue and so department of labor gave us some stats they said 50 percent of new filers received a notice of deficiency last year last fiscal year while only 25 percent of return filers did so you have you know a hundred percent greater chance of getting a notice deficiency on your first filing than you do on future filings and you have a one in two chance of getting a notice of deficiency so intuitively i've always told my clients get ready for a notice of deficiency well now i can tell them you have a 50 percent chance of getting one and really if you're not in a landscaper category or some other very common category for this program, you have a much higher chance than that of getting notice of deficiency. Because the other thing that we know, and this has been um, just a recurring complaint, is that these notice of deficiency rejections are spurious and without fact. And that's because DOL has told us, hey, these folks, not only are they working from home, but a lot of them are new. Remember, these are civil servants looking at it. These aren't attorneys, these aren't trained agents, but they, there are a lot of new people that have trouble diminish, you know, distinguishing between seasonal, peak load, intermittent, one-time occurrence need and specifically you know I've always seen that peak load is the toughest one to argue for because people don't understand the difference between it and seasonal they don't understand necessarily more complex arguments if I can say that you know they're looking at highs and lows on your payroll sheets and it just becomes a silly discussion so I always feel like I'm getting ready when I file a peak load claim to file an appeal where you know DOJ attorney will eventually look at it but again DOL said they are aware of this issue DHS uh, USCIS you know they announced the additional worker allotment what we know about the additional workers 
is they haven't announced when the rule will be uh, implemented, meaning when they're gonna release them, but they are thinking of releasing workers in three tranches. And there's gonna be one tranche for this October 1st set of workers, and there are gonna be two tranches for the April 1st workers. One that's gonna be released shortly after the April 1st deadline passes, and then one later for people who are filing later. So this stands, to be, they're thinking about uh, releasing 15,000 additional workers very quickly. And so then the question becomes, is there gonna be a lottery for those additional workers for the April season? Possibly. For the, this October 1 season, is there gonna be a lottery? Probably not. We think that there's gonna be uh, more positions available uh, with these additional workers that are gonna be necessary, and some of those may therefore roll over to the April season, okay? What else is there that is really important? Um, oh yeah, they did actually give a split. And so this is, um, Seasonal Employer Alliance put this out. 19,858 visas for October. That will be for returning workers, 20,000 Northern Triangle visas for new workers. So a total of 39,858 workers will be released for the first half. Let me back it up. 19,858 returning worker visas released for both this October half and the April half. Then, starting with October, 20,000 new worker visas will be released. Of the ones that aren't used, the remainder will roll over to April. And we anticipate that most of those won't be used. And then there will be an additional 5,000 workers on top of that released for late season filers, April filers. Okay, so that's gonna be a really interesting thing to see. So in total, it looks like April's getting, flat out, just getting 5,000 more uh, released workers than October, but they're also getting whatever's left over of Northern Triangle workers from the October season, which should be more than half of the 20,000 that are released. So I'll try to detail this in another video where I'm like writing things out, but that looks that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That's about it. I mean, that, that that's kind of the update Okay, so things are happening, things are moving, additional workers aren't released yet, but looks like we do know the numbers uh, for this season and for the upcoming season. So stay tuned. I hope this is helpful. My name is Damon DeNoble, Law Great. I do lots of H2Bs. I do lots of family stuff too. If you do want to file an H2B, deadline's coming up. Like that's got to be filed at the latest by November 10th. And I say that because it's going to take probably 40 days. It could take longer to get the prevailing wage back. And if it goes past, you know, the Christmas holidays, you're just not going to get that back in time, more likely than not. I'm swamped <laughs> with clients. So the latest, I, I had been saying November 10th, but I'm probably going to take my last client, uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday of this coming week and then call it because the firm is swamped. So I hope you are on your way to getting things filed. I hope these are helpful and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.